Here we have a data set of 699 breast cancer biopsies. Each biopsy is labeled as benign or malignant, and we have nine different measurements for each training example. And we can train a predictive model to tell us uh, which of these measurements gives us a good separation uh, between the two classes. And so BigML immediately gives me a decision tree model, and I can immediately see that if this one variable, uniformity of cell size, is greater than two, then 80% of the time, uh, those biopsies are malignant. And on the other side, uh, if that variable is less than or equal to two, then 95% of the time, uh, that biopsy is going to be benign. And so this is giving us great separation between the two classes. Uh, one challenge when dealing with predictive models and when interpreting them is that if you have a single variable that's really dominant, uh, it can obscure the importance of some other variables. And so in this case, this one variable is giving us excellent separation between the two classes, uh, but we still want to know if there are other variables uh, that are important in determining whether a biopsy is benign or malignant. And so I can actually go back to my data set, and this time, instead of training a predictive model, I'm actually going to train a set of association rules. And so BigML is going through and uh, finding all these different connections between these different variables. Uh, there's no one objective variable that we have told it to look at. It's just finding associations uh, between all of the different variables. And I can actually view these as a graph. And if I select the class field and tell BigML to color just that field, then I can immediately see that there are two groups of associations, uh, one for the malignant class of biopsies, and one for the benign class. And I can even drag the malignant class around, and I can actually see uh, that there's a large number of associations uh, connected to it. Now, if I dial up this leverage slider, uh, I can actually filter for just the most important associations. And so here, I've found uh, two really strong connections with the class being malignant. Uh, one is this clump thickness variable, and the other is this uniformity of cell shape variable. Now remember that model we just trained, it was actually a third variable that showed up in the decision tree. It was uniformity of cell size. Uh, here the association rules are telling us that uniformity of cell shape and clump thickness are also very important variables. And if I actually go back to my data set, and if I get rid of all the other variables except those two. So I'm just going to select clump thickness and uniformity of cell shape. I'm going to leave out uniformity of cell size, which was the variable that did so well in that first model that we trained. And then I'm going to create a model based just on these two variables. And I can actually go into the sunburst view and I can see that these two variables, just by themselves, are giving me excellent separation between the two classes. Uh, that's what all this bright green means. Uh, when you see bright green, it means you're getting an excellent separation between the two classes. So here I'm finding that uniformity of cell shape, uh, just by itself, gives me really good separation. And if I evaluate this model, I find that it does almost as well as the very first model I trained which used all the variables and found this one really important one, which was uniformity of cell size. And so this is a really quick example of how uh, you can actually use association rules to get insight into your data. And the network view in this case uh, is an extremely useful way to uh, get intuition into what the most important uh, relationships are in your data.